Hey Tony, here we are. This is uh, the Blender interface when you first launch it. The first thing you'll want to do is uh, exit from the splash screen here. And you do that simply by clicking off of it in the workspace. And then you see this basic cube in the background. That is what we're going to start our modeling with. But there's a couple things we have to do to set up initially so we can use your sketches as a reference. So the first thing we do we're going to come down here to the lower left corner to the view here and we're going to toggle to a quad view. In other words, we're going to show um, four views, top, front, right, and then the camera view. And you can zoom in and out and move in these views by using your mouse and the control and shift key. So the control key, if you hold it and then you pull on the top of your mouse if you have the standard Apple mouse. If you have a three button mouse that has a scroll wheel, you'll do this with the scroll wheel. And you can get that where you want it just by moving up and down. If you move left and right, oops, sorry. And then if we hold down the shift key, we can move it. Like so, we can move it up and down, sideways or not. And we have a clarity bar right there. And then we can also rotate the camera in the camera view we cannot do that in the other three views right front and top but if you just slide your mouse your finger across the top of your mouse you can rotate it back and forth and then if you slide it up and down you can rotate it from top to bottom pretty simple So now we're going to um, bring in your background images to use, or your sketches to use as background images, and we're going to use that for the front view and the side view. So let's now look at the how we do that. What we're going to do is we're going to um, bring in another um, tool window, which is called the navigation window. And you bring that up by simply typing N on your keyboard while your mouse is in the workspace. So you hit N, and it will come up. You want to scroll down to the very bottom of this window, and you'll see here background images. So select that, because we're going to use it, then you need to hit the arrow to pop it open, and then you're going to choose Add Image. Now the first thing you do here is you decide what view it's going to go in. By default, it's going to show up in all three views, but we only want it in one view, so we'll choose, uh, let's do Front, which will be this one, and we'll choose your front sketch. So now that we've chosen where it's going to display, we're going to open and find the file. Here's where Blender gets different um, from the Mac, is it doesn't use the Mac file picker. It uses its own file picker. Essentially works the same. There's a couple issues. It dumps you out into the root directory of your computer. So to get back to where you normally keep your files, you're going to have to go into the users folder, find your username, you may only have one if it's only your computer. Lisa uses mine, so she's on here as well. And then you'll see your normal documents, desktop, downloads type folders. Now I've already set up the photos we're going to use in my downloads folder. And they have a love death folder. And you'll see there's the front and the back image. And you click on the front. Then you come over to the upper right here. You click on open the image. And it comes in and you see it right there. Now we're going to do the same to get this right image. So we come in here and we click on the add image. We're going to add a new image. It's going to show up below the other one. Again, it will default to all views. And you want to make sure you select only, whoops, come back here, only the right view, which is this view here. It tells you right there, right or both. And then you click open. Again, go to users, to your user. My photos are in download, love death, and I want the side image. And I click open, and there it is. Now, a couple things to do here is you'll notice um, that it came in at a different scale than the first one. So we need to get those into the same scale. All right, Tony, so now we need to figure out um, how to get these images to the same scale. So I'll teach you a couple other um, techniques in using the windows. So I showed you a little bit how we can zoom in and zoom out and move up here in the camera view. 
And we can do the same thing in the other three views. The only thing we can't do in these views is rotate. So I'm going to zoom in on our front view a little bit so we can fill um, this entire space with the background sketch that we created. So I'm going to hold the control key and then pull up on the mouse, pull it towards me, and we're going to get it. Now I'm going to want to move this now over to the right, so like so. And what I want it to do is I want it to crip, <laughs> crip, good word. I just clip it a bit um, so that then I, when I scale this up, I can align the two. So I'm going to do the same technique here. Um, so I'm going to move this over here so I get the cube. I'm going to now move this one over so the cube is right there. So there's two things we got to be careful of here. One is we need to make sure that the cubes stay the same size. So I'm going to click control here, um, bring this in a little bit, shift to move, control again to scale up, shift again to move, control to scale. It's a little sloppy. Um, I apologize for that. I don't know of a better way to make sure these two come in same size. I think one more time. There we go. I think we got it. Okay, so our cubes are the same size. So now we just have to get um, the sketches in the same size. So the way we do that is we're going to come down to the back background images we created already. We have the front one, which is over here, and that's fine. We're going to leave that as it is. And then we have <clears throat> the right one, which is the one here that's clearly too small. So we're going to come in here and we can um, scale the image of that. Um, or we can transform the scale. Yeah, we can transform that image. Sorry, I'm not talking English today. And we do that right down here in this um, little numeric field I'm hovering over. So there's two ways you can edit the number, three ways you can edit the numbers in here. You can certainly double click and type in um, a number if you know what you want it to be, but that's uh, difficult when you're trying to like match something like we are, but if you were like new, you wanted to scale it from 10 uh, to 20, you just type in 20 and you'd be done. But that's not what we want to do. The other option you have is to use these toggle errors to go up or down. And the third option you have is if you click in the, the text field there where the number is and hold, you can then drag left or right to make it bigger or smaller. And that's how I tend to like to use it. It's just quicker. Gets you where you want to be. Boom. There we are. And I think we are nicely lined up. I'm going to move uh, this front view over a little bit. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, move over a hair. And yes, they're still good. OK, I'm happy with that. So now we know the cubes are the same size, um, the sketches are the same size in each view, so that means when we're modeling, um, they'll be in proper relation to one another. Now we have to do two other changes right away, and that is make sure that the cube is actually on the ground plane, uh, which is important when you're going to export it for a 3D model. So right now, half of the cube is below the ground plane, and that's this grid you can see here, and it's also shown by the green line in this right view and the red line in the front view. That's your ground plane. So we want to move the cube up um, so that it sits on the ground plane. The simplest way to do that when you're starting <clears throat> is to do it using numeric entry. So these uh, fields here show you the position of the cube and right now it's oriented at 000 by the center point of the cube which is that little orange dot there. So that's exactly in the center of your world. What we want to do um, is move it up so that the base is on the floor. Nice thing about doing this right away is the cube is two units tall and wide. So if we only need it to go half the width of the cube, we just have to move it up one unit. So Z, as you can see from these little widgets here, Z is the plane that moves it up. So in Z, I'm just going to click in that text area, enter the number 1, hit return, and instantly we're right where we want to be. So at this point, I'm going to 
save. And let's just call this guy for now. Um, I'm going to call him Love Death. I'm going to give him a zero one only because you see I already had started one earlier just to do some testing with the model. So this will just let me know it's a different version. Hit save. Now um, I am going to stop here at this point and we're actually going to exit out of Blender and come back in because I want to show you um, how you get back to this file when you know, when you've quit a session and you want to go back in and edit. So to quit, it's just like any other Mac app. You just go Command Q and it's gone. Hey Tony, so now we've reopened Blender and you're back to the splash screen. Nice thing about Blender um, when you relaunch it is right here in the splash screen that shows you the last um, five files that you I've been working on, and the most recent one's at the top, which is just what we were working on. So you can just hit that and relaunch back to where we were. So that's a really handy um, time saver I've found. So now I'm going to recenter um, these views and to. Okay. So to do that, um, we're going to click the shift key. We're going to move back here, get this in the center, do the same thing for this view. Now I want to, let's see, now that we have the cube on the floor, the baseline right there, we need to do the same thing with our sketches. In your sketch, you smartly have a nice floor line, baseline right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this image up so that it is aligned um, with that floor and then we're going to move it to the right so it's centered on his body and I'm going to use his nose as the center point on his body. So to do that I'm going to hold shift key down and scroll down so I'm kind of putting the floor down here that'll give us room to move his image up. Do the same thing over here and I'm just going to get the green line and the red line there. Let's line up Again, that just helps keep you oriented. It's not mandatory that they line up. Now we're going to scroll down over here in the navigation column. And I'm going to start with this right view. And we can move um, this guy up and down by using this new number field right here. Just like I showed you before, you can either just, um, ah, I'm bad. I lied. That's the left and the right. So let's zero that out. Let's do up and down first, which is here. So you can do it just by clicking away, or if you click in the field and drag, you can quickly get it to where you want it, right there. And then for the other view, do the same thing. Oops, bad. And we drag that up. Again, I want to line up your floor line with that red line. So everything, there we go. Now, as I told you, we're going to want to center him. So this is the center line of the space, right where that blue arrow comes up. And his nose is the center line of his model, so I'm just going to move it over. So those two are in alignment. So I'll click over here in this number field, and I'll just move it a little bit. And I'm going to say that is good, right there. And then I'm going to do the same for this, and I'm going to say the center point from the side view is a bit arbitrary, but I'm going to try to go right through the volume. Um, make sure I kind of catch where his, maybe his neck might be. So scroll down here. This is the left and right field. So click on that, hold, and then drag it. And I'm going to say our center is... Hmm, I'm going to say it's right there for our purposes. Now I'm going to save again. So we should be pretty much all ready to go. Um, but now I'm going to zoom in a little bit in all views so we can see uh, with more detail what your sketch looks like. So to do that, I'm going to hold down the control key, drag. And now I'm going to hold down the shift key, push him up a little bit. 
over here, hold down the option key, I'm sorry, the control key, and drag it up, shift, and yo, what's going on here? I like that. That is looking good. Top view, we're going to do the same thing. So control, drag. And we're not going to do a heck of a lot in the top view. That just kind of helps keep you oriented. I don't do a lot of modeling from that view. Maybe when we get towards the end of the project, you may have to add some detail on me why you want to do that. And then over here in the camera view, I'm going to use that technique to rotate, which is um, just have your mouse over the workspace, not over the object, and you can move it up and down to rotate. And I just want a little bit of the top view. And then I'm going to hold the shift key so I can move the entire view down. And then the control view because I want to pull out a little bit. Because we're going to be building this guy up and we're going to do some scaling. So that model is going to quickly fill this view. Um, but for right now, this is a good point of view. Now, what we are going to do is hide this navigation pane, so we click on the end key, and that goes away. Right now, we don't really need this tool pane, and we can get rid of that by simply click, clicking the T key. And those are always toggles, so T reveals it, T hides it. N reveals it, N hides it. Now I'm going to come over here, and we have a bunch of little tools up here that do different things in the environment. What I want to do is I want to add a modifier to the cube, and this is a subdivision surface modifier, which will um, take the geometry of, of the box and basically subdivide it until it becomes a sphere. And then we will edit the box and consequently the subdivision surface as well to create the figure. So you see what, you'll see what that means in a few minutes. So to get to the um, modifier, you come over here to um, the wrench. And I didn't explain how I drag, drag this open. It's kind of common in some applications. But, you know, if you move your cursor till you get to that border, you get that different icon, and that's the icon that lets you change the width of that window there. And I want just it big enough to see all the tools. So we've selected modifier. Now you click on the drop down and you see you got a lot of options here, but we're only interested in this column called generate. And if you go almost to the bottom, you'll see subdivision surface, and that's what we want to add, which is this. So there are two different settings for subdivision surface. One is the view setting, which is the space you're modeling in. And this is the lowest subdivision uh, setting, which is one. We could create Increase that just by toggling and going up. I then tend to model at four. Um, the nice thing about subdivision modeling is it's um, you can add, you can increase the resolution at any point as you're modeling your object. Now it's going to have an impact on how the model looks, um, but it's a really nice tool because the more polygons you have the more it's going to tax your computer and slow it down. So when if you can work at a lower resolution of subdivision for the basic modeling and then save um, the higher resolution for when you're kind of doing your finishing touches, that just makes everything work quicker. And that's the same reason you have a different um, subdivision rendering or size for the rendering. So let's go back to one here. And I'm going to change this one three and then we'll do a quick render just to show you what that looks like so to render you come up here to this camera icon you click on that and then you'll see there's a button called render so we're going to click that and it does a quick render so you can already see this um, still has polygons but a much higher count so it's a much smoother shape than what we see in the 3d view so to get back to the 3d view come down to this little icon here in the lower left and you're going to choose 3D view right there at the bottom, back to the 3D view. So that is the same cube right there. 
and you can confirm that you know just by coming back here and where we up the um, view also to the same so now they're both three three and you can see um, they're essentially the same and as I said I like to um, work at about four when I'm modeling so you might want to set your render like up to six so that it's even higher and this is a good spot to save so I'm going to save oops why did it undo me um, save there we go all right now let's look at our character here first thing I want to do is I want to slide this guy back because we've um, got the modifier in place we don't need all that space and then I somehow here oh I see what we did I'm gonna bring back the T window the tool window by hitting T reason I did that is I wanted to see the the baseline as you add and remove windows these um, all the other windows automatically resize and you can see that when you take away the tool window we're cutting off the bottom of the sphere we're not seeing the floor so just to do this economically I'm gonna keep showing that so now I can see the floor and see where that is on the, the model so to edit we need um, to go into what's called edit mode right now we're in object mode which means we can do basic edits to large objects such as moving them scaling them rotating them but that's it we can't add any new detail to them um, we certainly can't sculpt them in any fashion so in object mode this ball will remain a ball no matter what we do so to edit it and finally create the character you have to go into edit mode which you come down here to the toolbar you see object mode that's what we're currently in you click on that and you'll see the second item edit mode and now you're revealed you're seeing the original cube again because it's still there that's what's um, controlling the final shape of that um, subdivision surface that renders the sphere so we're gonna do some quick edits here the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this because this is gonna be the basis of his torso and I want to scale it up um, equally all the way around so I'm just it's really easy to scale it's a simple key command it's an S you touch the S and you see you get this dotted line and the arrow here and if you pull away from the center it scales the object up if you move towards the center it scales it down so we basically want to get it about to the size where it can in the right view represents the width of the character's torso and it pretty much nailed it also for uh, the side view which is kind of handy now you can see it also because we scaled it moved um, the bottom of the sphere below the floor so there's an easy way to fix that and that is um, we can move um, trying to think of the best way there's a number of ways to do this and I'm going to try and think of the most economical way to do it in other words the way that will require less edits later so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select what are this bottom part so I'm going to um, control zoom out a bit and I'm just going to select the bottom plane and we're going to move that upwards until the ball um, is just touching the floor line here. So to do that, we're going to deselect all the elements. Anything that's yellow is selected. So deselecting it, you'll see everything goes back to black and gray. If I do, and I did that by hitting the A key. If I hit the A key again, everything is selected. So A is another one of those keys that toggles on and off. So if you hit A, it selects everything. If you hit A again, it deselects everything. This is really handy, <clears throat> as you can imagine, because it just clears everything before you go to edit again. So we want to um, edit the bottom plane. So the simplest way to do that is we come down here to the tools, and there's an option to choose what component you want to um, edit your model. And you have three options. You can edit on the point level, which is are these, and when we move those we can use these cursors and as you see we can pull them and it, it distorts that um, subdivision surface basically like a magnet that's kind of the effect that's going on there 
That's how if you just edit a simple curse or a simple um, vertex. I'm going to undo that. Now if we go to the, um, now I'm going to click A to deselect that. And if we go to the edge tool, which are the lines, now when we select, we're only going to select an edge at a time, no matter where we click. We're always going to grab an edge, never a point, never a plane. And so if you just grab an edge and then you move it, you see it's taking all of it and stretching everything towards that edge. And I'm undo that. Now let's come down to these tools again. And now we're going to choose face select, which is the side of um, the object. It's any uh, contained plane. And you'll see as we get further into editing the object, um, and we subdivide what that means because sometimes you'll be editing very small faces. But it works the same way. We can drag it and influence the shape of the uh, sphere and undo that. If we were to click this plane, you see it would gonna do it in that axis. So what I want to do is I want to select this bottom plane which is not going to let me do from this view. So I need to come over here and I'm going to rotate the view using the mouse and just sliding it, sliding my finger across the surface of the mouth, mouth, mouse till I get to see the bottom. And I right, I just right click on that and it's now selected. And then I can use um, the Z widget, the blue arrow, to just move it up. So I can do that in any of these three views, and it's going to have the same effect. So I'm going to do it from this view because I want to be able to see when the bottom of the sphere is touching the what is the floor here. So right about there. So that's good. And then click A to deselect everything else. And then we're going to um, do a similar thing for the top. Now we're just going to grab that plane, and we're going to pull it up to be close to where his shoulders are. So now I'm going to stretch it out. That looks pretty darn good. That looks like about where you have the shoulders. Now you're going to see when we did that, everything um, influences everything in subdivision surface models. So when you look now, the bottom of the sphere doesn't touch the floor anymore because by stretching this out, it kind of pulled um, the object off the floor. So now we can come back to this bottom view, click that bottom one, use that blue arrow to drag it down, and about like that, and we can see that everything looks good. Now let's stop and save there. And let's um, quit there for now. I'll come back later and we'll proceed from here. So now Let's leave edit mode. So we'll go to object mode. So we've got the basic torso, and we're going to, um, as we progress, we're going to pull the arms out of this torso on either side, and we're going to pull the tentacles out as well. And that will all be basically one piece. And then when we are um, ready to do the other objects that make the model, which are going to be um, the skull, the hood, uh, the scythe, his hand, and if you want the hand and scythe to be one piece, um, we can certainly do it that way too. And then um, the secondary hand that has him flipping the bird. That's basically either five or six objects we're going to create that will all um, come together to make your figure. So I am now, since I did save, I'm going to exit. And then we will um, come back and work on this some more.